What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is on ex-Chelsea coach. Chelsea's most successful manager of all time going to Chelsea's most bitter rivals, Tottenham Hotspur. What does that mean? Is he a snake? Is it just exciting box office news that continues in the great narrative of the Premier League? Is it quite funny or is it just disrespectful? Today's video is solely going to be about this subject. I'm going to be talking to you about what happened, what it means for Chelsea fans, what it means for Jose Mourinho, and how I personally feel about it. So, Tottenham currently lie in 14th place down in the Premier League over this international break. And although, although many people probably had it in their heads that this project had run its course with Maurizio Pochettino and Tottenham Hotspur, it still came as a surprise when they gave Maurizio Pochettino the boot. Him and Tottenham parted ways. Like I said, it seemed like it had to happen, but when it actually does happen, it seems peculiar because he's been one of their most successful coaches in a long, long time. And I measure success by developing a team, a style of play, a philosophy, and winning games. Obviously not by winning trophies. But if you look at the run of Tottenham's poor, poor results of this season, and indeed the end of last season it kind of makes sense why they got rid of him. Pochettino's reputation will not be tarnished by this. I think there's a lot of animosity between the Tottenham Hotspur board and indeed Maurizio Pochettino in terms of getting the players. He, he himself was coming out many times whether it be before the end of last season before the Champions League in pre-season like this summer that's just gone by and throughout you know certain press conferences he's been making very peculiar noises and you could tell there was unrest between him and the chairman Daniel Levy. It's also worth mentioning about this Amazon all or nothing documentary that's coming out which is going to be incredibly entertaining for a multitude of reasons. Matt Law of the Telegraph wrote a really good article on this I urge you to go and read it talks about how they forced that upon Pochettino, how it's something he wouldn't have wanted but he had to deal with, like you wouldn't get that at Man United, certainly at the moment they weren't interested in it, Man City welcomed it because they knew they had a really good chance of winning the Premier League title and it would look good for them, any other big six clubs would be like no thank you, we don't want any of that round here. Um, including Tottenham Hotspur, certainly from the coach's perspective, but it was forced you know, upon Poch and the rest is history in terms of the downhill decline. Players like Ericsson, Alderweireld and others didn't want to be there and I think Pochettino would have sold them and tried to bring in new superstars. Sure, they signed like Lo Celso, Cessignon and, and Dombele, who's an excellent player, but it was probably too little too late. Anyway, that's a little background knowledge for you. Let's bring Chelsea into this because it is Chelsea related with Jose Mourinho. Now in 2016, Jose Mourinho went to Manchester United. Chelsea fans were probably in a strange place here because they know the Manchester United job is one that Jose Mourinho has always wanted. And you can forgive him for that. It's the biggest, most successful club in England. Sure, he did great, great things with Chelsea and indeed other teams around Europe, but he wanted the United job. So when he finally got it, a lot of Chelsea fans saw him going to a big six rival or at the time a top four rival and thinking, oh, that's no good, but maybe it's sort of love was lost, but you could kind of forgive him for it. Obviously, he's gone to Tottenham. Now, let's switch back to the Tottenham perspective. They have basically need a passionate character in to reinvigorate the squad. I know Jose can go both ways with that, but they've obviously got an inferiority complex when it comes to not winning trophies, and although he's been hit and miss of late Jose, mainly miss, he is still synonymous in his career with being a passionate motivator and winning trophies. So how do Chelsea fans feel about this? Well if he went to the Tottenham job straight after, say in the 2016 when he went to United, if he went to Tottenham that would be explosive. But the way things have gone since, it probably softens the blow a little bit. Think about it. At United, you saw him self-destruct again like he did at his last season at Chelsea eventually. You know, things got toxic. And also, I think a really important thing here is his war with words with Antonio Conte. Chelsea fans adored Antonio Conte. He was jumping in with the fans. He made Chelsea great again. He won the Premier League title. He imbued the fan base and the players with raw passion and he, like I said, jumping in with the fans, they absolutely love that. Conte's Chelsea slaps Jose Mourinho's Manchester United around 4-0 at Stamford Bridge in their first meeting. 
and animosity began there between the two coaches when Conte was celebrating, Jose told him he wasn't allowed to celebrate, and the war of words started where, you know, Conte said he had senile dementia, uh, Jose said he'd been match fixing, Conte said he's a little man and he'll always be a little man. You catch my drift. And at the time, Chelsea fans are going to back their current coach as any football fan would. So that was just more and more love lost of Jose Mourinho and Chelsea fans. So you could say all of that narrative in between 2016 and now seriously, seriously, seriously softens the blow. Like, remember, he went to Stamford Bridge. There was a few probably disrespectful idiots chanting Judas, Judas or whatever. Remember, Chelsea Football Club sacked Jose twice he didn't walk away and go straight to spurs he got sacked twice granted the second time it was untenable he had to go but you know it, it you, context is required but he gave it the free 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 as in i've won you three premier league titles which is fair enough and you know he's entitled to give a bit back so everything in between changes the context of the appointment a little bit but Jose Mourinho has gone to Tottenham Hotspur, Chelsea's probably most bitter rival in the Premier League. Now let me tell you how I feel about the situation. So on paper, it's very, very, very peculiar, and it does feel uh, strange and odd. I don't feel disrespected as a Chelsea fan, really, because I'm looking at it so objectively from a sort of bird's eye view that it's such a box office appointment. Jose Mourinho in the Premier League is so hilariously entertaining and not just because he's brilliant winning all the time and being funny like he used to like you know young Jose Chelsea 1.0 at Chelsea because he does good he gets in the opposition managers heads but then most of the time he does bad and he explodes and comes out with some hilarious stuff for me and for most Chelsea fans I think the thing that makes this okay or digestible at the moment is that there hasn't been such a feel-good factor at Chelsea for years and years and years maybe since jose came back for the first time for a little bit more so than that because frank lampard who coaches chelsea football club is chelsea's greatest ever player they're joint second in the premier league they're playing attacking football and they're playing all the kids and scoring loads of goals and literally things couldn't be any better for tottenham hotspur right now things couldn't be much worse, hence bringing in Jose Mourinho, who remember, isn't a guaranteed fix. If carrying on with Mauricio Pochettino was a viable option, they would have done it, but no, it was untenable. Jose Mourinho's without a job, they've given him a two and a half year contract. I reckon had they had their way, they probably would have given him a one and a half year contract to try and test the waters and see if it works. But obviously they spent all night negotiating until the announcement was made 6 a.m. this morning. What does this mean for Pochettino? Does he go to United? Does Ten Hag not come to the Premier League and go to Bayern Munich? All probably, and that's an interesting talking point about Manchester United actually that I'll probably talk about on social media and stuff, but it's not really suitable for my channel at present. But it's going to be certainly very, very, very interesting the reception that Jose Mourinho gets when he brings his Tottenham Hotspur side to Stamford Bridge. Right, now that felt weird. And indeed, probably not to the same degree, but when he brings his Spurs side to Old Trafford and to the Manchester United fans. But he was more of a mercenary for them than ever. So I want to end this video talking about my final opinion and th final thoughts on this situation. In terms of being a proper Chelsea man, Jose Mourinho, I don't think ever was that. Jose was an integral component in Chelsea becoming an elite superpower in Europe and football. It wouldn't have happened if Jose Mourinho didn't come to Chelsea. And indeed, Mourinho's career probably wouldn't have gone the way it did, you know, into Milan, Real Madrid, maybe if he didn't come to Chelsea and win two Premier League titles. But the truth is, Jose's not a one-club man. You could not give a better example of the opposite of a one-club man. Throughout his career, from being a translator at Barca to Porto, to Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Chelsea, Man United, it goes on and on and on. This should surprise no one. The man's a hustler, he's a managerial mercenary, and Chelsea will always be thankful of what he gave to him. But the truth is, Roberto Di Matteo is more Chelsea than Jose Mourinho. It's just facts, man. And the most positive fact of all is, Chelsea's current coach is the most Chelsea of all. So with Frank Lampard at the helm, it makes the whole narrative easier to digest, and you could sit back, hopefully, from as neutral point you can, 
and just laugh at the show that is the Premier League. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do like the video. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you are new. Also, please do go subscribe to my sister channel, Yan Plays, where I'm playing FIFA at the moment. It's so much fun. Hopefully, you guys dig it. Well, a lot of you do, so go check it out and subscribe. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Dramatic, epic news, guys. Absolute box office. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Get down there, enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.